Welcome to Behind the Badge with your special guest, Lieutenant Williams. Your new source for all things police in the city of Bondurant. This is KFIZ today, and it's Behind the Badge, our weekly visit with the Fond du Lac Police Department. It's been a minute or two since we've seen him. It's Lieutenant Ryan Williams. I'm Hi back. Ryan. I'm yeah. back. I had my fill-in. Um, yeah, she said, can we go to <laughs> She said that you guys had a lot of fun on your recruitment trip going up to some of the technical colleges and whatnot. You guys really put together a, a fun time. Yeah, that was, uh, it, it, for those that don't know what we're talking about, uh, we have it uh, documented on our YouTube. Uh, we kind of thought it'd be fun to kind of film and, and go to some of the sites along the way, even though I, I do say if I like, you know, we got better stuff. Uh, when we of course. Get, uh, of course. But uh, we stopped in uh, some places in Appleton, Green Bay and stuff like that. But recruiting trip went very well, like, and we got a good response. Um, we just uh, had a process a week ago and um, this, this, we're during this last week here. We uh, are doing our Chiefs interviews, and uh, we'll see. Hopefully, we can get some more faces to bring into the radio station so that everybody can uh, meet them, which brings us to this new face that I have today. We've got uh, another new hire in studio. We love having the new hires. And the first time ever um, is uh, this is a lateral lieutenant. That's right. So from, from well, they have, uh, where he comes from, they had sergeants, which is like a first-line supervisor. He's going to go to lieutenant, which is our first-line supervisor. But this is Kevin Post. Kevin, uh, tell us a little about yourself. Oh boy, now I'm put on the spot. You are, yes. Uh, so I'm born and raised in Fond du Lac. Uh, spent the last seven years uh, in Sheboygan working for their police department. Uh, the last nine months or so as a supervisor over there. So uh, just looking to kind of come back home where the family is. It's been a weird relationship because uh, I have been uh, <laughs> I've been kind of stalking um, uh, Kevin for a while. So probably two years going on. We've had uh, lots of text message exchanges, and um, you know, it's like it's like a weird uh, online dating relationship <laughs> where, like, I feel like he's close, and then he changes his mind the last second. And what finally did it, I think, was that we had the opportunity for laterals to come in at the lieutenant's. Uh, tell us a little about that, Kevin. Like, uh, well, I'd like to point out that Ryan did not let me know that there's laterals for lieutenants. I had to find out through Facebook. You had um, broken my heart by that point. Like, I, I was done. I'm like, balls in your court. Like, I just, I said, nope, he's not coming. Well, at that point, I was a little concerned that maybe I was getting catfish. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. but no, I uh, found out about it through Facebook, and uh, it just lined up perfectly. Uh, family had moved back to Fond du Lac within a couple months before that, uh, so that way my wife didn't have to commute. And um, turned out that they had laterals, and it was just perfect opportunity, perfect timing. Uh, put in, it was a nice and simple process uh, that I should not have been as afraid of or um, aggravated about, not aggravated, uh, um, concerned about. Uh, so it worked out very nicely. It was quick, clean, simple, uh, and now here I am. One thing our, our chief has done, and um, I say this with, uh, with, with, with true heart, is um, some people talk the talk and they don't walk the walk, but our chief really thinks about the culture of our department and he does not want to put someone that's going to create a negative um, culture in place because that just has so many um so many effects like you know a pebble in, in the water just rings and rings and rings that it can affect a department and i think one of the things that he liked about um uh, lieutenant post i'm trying to, I'm trying to start calling you that now <laughs> is that he i think he is a culture guy um, I think that he he uh, he does care, and I think that's is, is that true, or am I putting words in your mouth? Or? Uh, yes, I would agree with you. <laughs> so he's he's kind of of my same like uh, upbringing. Uh, so he he did make uh, some hay on some internet things uh, as far as for his police, his former police department. Um, uh, so maybe we'll have a lot to talk about later on uh, as as he gets on. But first, we'll have to get him on board and stuff. So um, he said he was kind of scared to go on the radio. I said, "Come on, you've been." Uh, You've been like a media face for a little bit so what's that like what's that like being uh in charge of like the media of your department and stuff uh well you know we as supervisors over there we all had access to facebook uh so i did some of that but uh yeah we we had a TikTok over there um fairly successful um i think even chicago pd reached out to us because they were looking at starting their own and were looking for advice from us um but it, it's a little different you it, know it was very successful like they, 
I see. Yeah. TikTok, you don't do TikTok, so this is an opportunity for some growth, right? Well, I did do TikTok, so. Um, Doesn't sound like you did it very well, though. Not as good as Lieutenant Paul. So I've heard that the secret's in the dictating. <laughs> uh, I've talked to some sources. So it's who you kind of like, uh, you know, put the hashtag on and, and who you all include. But um, I did mine with students at, at St. Bench when I was a school resource officer because that's the language they speak. And I had to speak yeah. their language. And I, I'll tell you what, you can make a lot of people's uh, day if you just are an officer doing a TikTok with them. I believe it. Um, but then uh, what happened was the Chinese influence of TikTok uh, happened and uh, most departments in the state, I, I think it's statewide, um, don't let you Got use, yeah, they don't let you use uh, uh, that format on work-related stuff. No, right. I mean, I still have it on my, my, my personal phone and stuff like that. Um, Chinese can see me, I'm not that interesting, but uh, um, it, it is a good format and a lot of kids uh, still use uh, that that format, so it is kind of a good uh, good language to talk to uh, talk to kids in, uh, and uh, I actually I, I still do uh, TikToks with um, some of my CSOs because uh, that's the language I speak. Sure, and uh, we we do we uh, we do some fun ones, but not like they're not like released publicly. It'll be on their personal ones. So the opportunity though maybe to collaborate here with Lieutenant Post on some video ideas that you guys I, are just really I, good at. I think so. I think so. I think that's out there. Um, Besides uh, being an awesome lieutenant, what are some of the other things you like to do? Uh, I enjoy family time. Like I said, that's kind of one of the reasons that we ended up back here. Uh, avid deer hunter uh, for one week of the year. Uh, other than that, it's all done. Um, but yeah, just mostly family time, a uh, bunch of camping throughout the summer. Uh, I'm still one of those people that owns a pop-up. They still make pop-ups actually. They do. Uh, yeah, uh, I really enjoy going to the private campgrounds, and I'm like one of four pop-ups in the entire place. Does your pop-up have an air conditioner? It does. Yes, no, that's, that's what you have to get. Yeah. As long as you have that, you're good. Air conditioner, heater, a little, little mini fridge. I mean, oh, yeah. it's got put, the comfort. Put six, six packs of soda in there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I used to be a hardcore camper. Like We had the hard side trailer, travel trailer, and we just sold it this year. So my kids got to it in age where they just weren't enjoying it's it and great. kids okay. sports. Yeah. Too busy. As well. Yeah, too busy. Um, so we sold it. It's kind of sad for me. I think I was the only one that still wanted it, but we were going nine times a year um, consecutive, like for many years. Wow. And then we just kind of, uh, we did a couple and now um, we usually just rent like a, like a house or something at, at on these on or near these campsites when our neighbors go and, um, and do it that way. It was kind of weird though. Like, so we would, a very close neighborhood and we all leave the neighborhood to go camp together <laughs> which really doesn't make sense because we could just literally have a fire in our front yard yeah you don't need to go anywhere <laughs> sounds like the same thing yeah but do you have as many as mosquitoes at your house i mean that's the real right thing you got to have the right amount of mosquitoes <laughs> the bite the bite ratio has to be there so you said native of Fond du Lac? yes right so graduate of uh winnebago lutheran academy wla all right yes. go vikings that's cool. fantastic um yeah so that, that's going to help with orientation. Uh, so, so that would be nice. Um, with him coming in as, as a, a lateral lieutenant, which is interesting because uh, you know we've, we've we've had a lot of laterals this year, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. which um, is great. So so that's great. But we still have that hiring process, and we're still looking for people too. So uh, if you guys know like other officers that want to come in um, as a lateral out there, uh, definitely contact me, uh, and we can make it happen. That the process, um, as the temple said here, uh, goes pretty quick and. Uh, for, for um, someone that contacts me and just wants to be an officer, it goes even quicker because I can just do everything in like half a day, which is amazing for the standards of law enforcement. We also are looking for uh, CSOs as well, community service officers. We brought some of those on, on the radio too. Uh, if you ever want to become a police officer, that is the way. I wish I would have done it. Like I, would, I wish I would have uh, been a CSO, but speaking of CSOs and started CSOs, Lieutenant Post started as a CSO with us. I did. In Fondy? I did, yes. Wow. Yeah, started off as a CSO. I think I worked, uh, it was probably about a total of three years while I was going through and getting my associates and then starting my bachelor's. And um, timing just lined up that, uh, Fon or, uh, sorry, Sheboygan was uh, the first one to kind of pull the trigger. So that was the opportunity that I had. That's where I went. Uh, but now I'm back. Now he's back. So it's kind of cool, like, because it's been a, uh, uh, reunion um, with a lot of the officers that were around. Some of them were CSOs at the same time, so uh, it's been kind of a cool. But uh, um, tell us about like how CSO like prepared you for law enforcement. 
Uh, yeah, so it gives you uh, kind of a unique perspective. You're working inside the department. You're working with uh, you know who would be your coworkers if you were hired as a sworn law enforcement officer. Uh, but it really gets gets you into kind of the orientation phase already. You're learning the systems, uh, you know, for like dispatch. Uh, you're learning radio communication, <clears throat> uh, geography. Uh, some of the more simple processes of abandoned autos, parking tickets. Uh, I believe you guys probably still do like uh, some of the other ordinance enforcements, maybe yep. some some simple thefts without suspects. Uh, so you learn all of that, the documentation process, how to enter things as property, uh, which then jumps right into entering things as uh, evidence. Uh, but really chipping away at those main things that cause problems with officers in you know the first phases of training. Uh, you already have that done. Um, and then you're moving right into the bigger things uh, that you need to get through in order to, you know, complete your your FTO experience. This is why I brought him on. I couldn't have said it better myself. I was um, gonna say, I think you know, if you ever are sick or you know, we need we need to fill in, and Cammy and you are unavailable. We've right. got a tenant post here that's he could do the radio. Yeah. Uh, the other thing uh, of all those things um, is we we talked about before culture, right? Like you become part of our culture as a CSO, and you, you become an accepted member of our family, and. Uh, it's honestly like the longest job interview you could possibly go on because you know a lot of times you're, you're finishing up school but we really get to see like what you are as a worker and who you are and um and you get to see us and find out if that's what you want to do uh, i always i always call on my recruiting trips the cso is the try it before you buy it phase right like do i really want to take this uh this jump in my career is this the path i want to go to and you can find out and you know what if you come to me as a CSO and you try it and, and you find out it's not for you, that's still a success, right? Because I'm not here to make you do anything against your will. I'm here to help you kind of discover what you want to be in life, like what you want to be in grow up. I, um, yeah, I, I would prefer that you want to work for us with the Fallen Police Department, but if that's not you, that's fine too because these kids are young. Like, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up at 20, 21. Um, and I don't expect them either. So the, everyone's journey takes them on different ways. I'm there to help facilitate them. I'm there to get them closer to their goals as much as I can. And we do that through our CSO program. So it's a great program that we have. It's uh, sometimes you can get college credit for it um, through, through various schools. So it's, it's a, basically a paid internship. Um, I'm just gonna have. say that's how I describe it. Yeah, paid internship, absolutely. So um, if you if you know someone that's interested um, in becoming a CSO, you have to be 18 years of age, you have to have a valid driver's license, and you can apply at FDLpolice.com. Um, I will run processes, I can run them really quick. So if I have like two or three names in there, I'll run another process. Uh, and we're really looking for help for the summer. You do a lot of special events. We've got those farmer's markets. Always gotta staff them farmer's markets. Uh, we have a lot of them, so a lot of special events that we'd love to, to staff. And then uh, it's funny because the the CSOs get almost do more community stuff than our officers do because they run like the, the radar throw. Um, so that's out at a lot of community events during the summer and they get those like positive interactions with the community more so than our officers do because our officers are busy taking calls during a lot of that time. So so yeah, definitely FDLpolice.com if you know anyone that wants to apply for an officer or a CSO. Awesome. Lieutenant Post, welcome to the team and looking forward to you'll be back. I know they'll be back. He'll be back. He's he's my replacement. Right? Definitely Your replacement, is. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, someday, please. Awesome. It's behind the badge, KFIZ today. <laughs>